Let me invite you to take your copy of the Word of God, either in print or electronic form, and turn with me to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 2. 2 Timothy, chapter number 2. This is indeed a special day in the life of the Southern Seminary community. And Dr. Muller, thank you for the privilege of being able to bring a charge uh, on this uh, special day of commissioning, uh, particularly those who will go from our community out uh, this summer on uh, mission trips. Uh, this is an exciting time, and I believe a sign of God's favor that we have so many who are participating in this kind of outreach uh, who are part of our Southern Seminary community. 2 Timothy 2, verses 8 through 10 is our text this morning. If you have found 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verse 8, let me invite you, if you would, to stand back up one more time. Let's honor the reading of the Word of God together this morning, and let me invite you to follow along in your hearts as I share this Word from God's Word, 2 Timothy 2, verses 8 through 10. The Scripture says, keep your attention on Jesus Christ, as risen from the dead and descended from David. This is according to my gospel. I suffer for it to the point of being bound like a criminal, but God's message is not bound. This is why I endure all things for the elect, so that they also may obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus, with eternal glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Our great commission, motivation. Why do we do what we do? A variety of books and articles, pamphlets, pundits and prognosticators have tried to get to the issue of attitude and motivation for what we do in the Christian life. Particularly in the light of our urgency with the Great Commission, why should we even celebrate uh, a missions service like this? Why is this so central to the life of the Southern Seminary community where we would take time in a service of corporate worship to commission those from our community who will go out this summer on mission for Christ? Why are we committed institutionally to the priority of the Great Commission in all that we do here at Southern Seminary? I believe we find the answer for that here in this word that Paul pins to Timothy in the last letter he would ever write this side of eternity. And in a few moments together, I want to just walk through this text and offer for you three areas of emphasis, three motivating factors, three convictions that I believe challenge us in terms of why this day matters and why we are committed as as an institution to the urgency of the Great Commission mandate in all that we do. First of all, we do these things because we are driven by a love for the master. We are driven by a love for the master. Paul writes in verse 8, keep your attention, literally remember Jesus Christ as risen from the dead and descended from David. This is according to my gospel. Now, we could stop and ask for a moment, why would the Spirit of God need to inspire the Apostle Paul to tell Timothy to remember Jesus Christ, to keep your attention on Jesus Christ? I mean, after all, Timothy had been personally discipled and mentored by the Apostle Paul. He had inspired letters written to him. He was the pastor of a local church in Ephesus. Surely he would know that Jesus should be the priority of his life and work. And yet sadly, even for those of us in a seminary context, Those of us who may be engaged in studying the things of God or actively involved in church ministry, it is far too easy for us at times to be overly concerned with the work that we are doing and neglect the worship of the one who has called and commissioned us to this task. To remember that everything we do, we do because of the preeminence of Jesus Christ, the one who has changed our lives. If we've been gripped by the gospel, the one who has called us and commissioned us, to the task of connecting all people to him. If Paul was inspired by the Spirit of God to remind Timothy of these things, how can we not hearken unto his counsel that in all that we do, Christ would be preeminent? We are committed to the Great Commission because we believe that Christ has commanded his church to go into all the world and to make disciples, every one of us. And that is a commission for pastors and missionaries, And believers, all of us, regardless of what your calling may be, we have a responsibility to honor our Lord by our Great Commission obedience. Keep your attention on Jesus Christ. This is according to the gospel. 
But not just because of our love for the master, but secondly, Paul says we should do this because of our love for the message. Because of our love for the message. This is according to my gospel. I suffer for it to the point of being bound like a criminal. But God's message is not bound. Of course, you know, Paul was penning these words in the context of imprisonment, in the context of impending death. He was physically bound, literally in a Roman prison. And even as he is there, physically chained, physically bound, physically imprisoned, he says, but the Word of God is not bound. The reality is we live in a cultural context that I think our president has so helpfully reminded us where those of us who are committed to the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ in this particular day and age, we cannot be silent. And the reality is we're living in a day and age where people are going to be even more disinclined to hear what we have to say because we cannot faithfully proclaim the gospel without dealing with the issue of sin and without calling people to repent, to turn from that sin to trust Christ. Is a message that increasingly is trying to be bound by this world. And sadly, too many are going the route of capitulation and compromise. But this cannot be true of us. There must be no uncertain sound from us that we will declare, just as Paul did, that there is salvation in no other name except by turning from your sin and trusting Jesus by faith alone to be your Savior. And that we will go regardless of the cost, the opposition, the oppression, the persecution. We're reminded, of course, that the earliest believers saw persecution and suffering as a sign of God's favor, that they were counted worthy to suffer for the name of Christ. How can we ever believe we would be exempt or immune from a similar fate if we're going to be faithful to the task of the Great Commission? The message. Do we love the message enough where we too are willing to suffer for this? But thirdly, not just our love for the master and our love for the message, Paul emphasizes we've got to have a love for the mission. A love for the mission. Verse 10, this is why I endure all things for the elect, so that they also may obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It's an interesting construction of the use of the word elect, because typically it's referencing election as a past event, those who are already elect, those who have obtained salvation in a sense. Now, time does not permit me, and this is not a uh, sermon on the doctrine of election, but I would want to make a couple of points uh, very emphatically to you. First of all, Paul had a more accurate, comprehensive, and complete understanding of the doctrine of election than any of us. And number two, his understanding of the doctrine of election in no way inhibited or impeded his Great Commission obedience. In fact, he saw it as motivating his Great Commission obedience. Something is wrong when we try to pit our understanding of the biblical teaching of election with the biblical command to go and to make disciples. And it is a false and unbiblical dichotomy to pit election and evangelism against one another. Let me be even more emphatic. If you love the doctrine of election more than you love the command to go and make disciples, something is wrong and deficient in your theology. We know from our history that those who birthed the modern missions movement that we celebrate were those who were driven by a robust biblical and theological understanding that God saves sinners. And that we have the privilege and the task of being the ambassador to go and to declare that there is salvation in Christ. And that God is working in and through us to redeem a people from every tongue, every tribe, every nation. And so we go in confidence that it is not because of our wisdom, our wit, or our winsomeness. It is not because of our ability or our utterance. We go because God is pleased to use us as his instruments. Instruments in the hands of the redeeming Savior to declare that there is salvation in no one else. I'm thankful to be the dean 
of the first graduate school for Great Commission Studies ever established at a Southern Baptist Convention affiliated seminary. I am thankful for the heritage of Southern Seminary. The first professorship of missions at any seminary in North America was established here at Southern Seminary at the turn of the 20th century. Our Great Commission roots run deep. Our passion is to see the nations rejoice because they've experienced the life-changing gospel of Christ. And I believe all of us, not just on the Billy Graham School faculty, but my friends in the School of Theology at Boyce College, every one of us desire to see you, as a member of this seminary community, be someone through whom God is working to reconcile men and women and boys and girls to Christ. That's why we will be unapologetic in calling you to go. To go to the nations. To go to Louisville to Kentucky, to Indiana, to as you go make disciples. Because we know that God is pleased to use us as his agents declaring the glorious grand gospel of grace. That's why we can endure all things. Because it's not about us. It's about him. And may he find us faithful May he make us fruitful in the task. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for loving us with an everlasting love. We thank you, O Lord, for the word of God, absolutely true, unbreakable, through which it is so clear your heart and your desire is to reconcile and to redeem a people innumerable in number from every tribe, every tongue, every language, every background. This is our task. This is our mission. This is our mandate. Oh, Lord, I pray that you would use us as a seminary community, those of us who are called to teach and called to lead here, to do all that we can to motivate and to mobilize students for the unfinished task. Lord, I pray that you would bless us as we continue in this service of worship, as we commission those who will be going out this summer. Bless them, oh, Lord. May they know of our love, our prayers, your provision, and your glory in this. For we ask and we pray these things by the Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord.